never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God cause all my the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend. And I have goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness Welcome everyone back to Hopeside Vespers. Today is uh, November 10, 2023. We're glad to be able to come back together and worship together. And today is the second week of the month. And here's a quotation for our reflection, focused on health. It says, Healing takes time, and asking for help is a courageous step. So sometimes when we are hurting, it is greatly advisable to ask for help. And uh, that quotation is by Mariska Hagrite. 
So focus on uh, your health as it's the most important thing that we can uh, consider we being mere mortals because there's so much that's happening in the environment and we have to be extra vigilant about our own health. We're glad to have Ms. Amira Chinta and she will offer the opening prayer. Well, Jesus, thank you for help, for guiding us and helping us with everything that we do. Thank you for keeping us safe and healthy. Thank you for the Sabbath to rest from a busy week. Please help us to keep the Sabbath holy. Bless us, all of us gathered here today to worship and study your word. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. We are glad to have uh, Mr. Mesha Parmanandam joining us. He has given many great messages in the past. And so we welcome him again today to present tonight's message. Past few weeks, you have been blessed with a lot of uh, interpretation from the book of Daniel, the message from the book of Daniel. And uh, we see that the book of Daniel reflecting to the very present time that we are living. It's one of the most single-handed prophetic book, like the book of Revelation. And we see the main character in the book of Daniel was Daniel himself, who is the author of the book itself. Now we see that uh, the strength that Daniel received was not after he after they went into Babylon captivity. The strength that Daniel received was when he was a young child with his parents. His parents taught him the Bible. His parents prayed with him. And then as a teenager, when he was taken away, by the Chaldeans uh, to the land of Babylon, we see what he took with him was the word of God. Just imagine walking three months towards from Jerusalem to Babylon without food and water. And we see not much was given to them. When he reached Babylon, he was skin and bone. He could have eaten anything that the king could offer. But we see that Daniel kept the truth, the temperance, the health me message, and uh, the biblical principles of diet and biblical principles of living a good life. That gave him the strength when he reached Babylon, when the king offered him an unholy food, an unhealthy food, a food that is not supported by the scripture. And so we see he was a brave young man as a teenager in Babylon. With the word of God, Daniel downloaded the strength of God. So my topic today is download the strength of God. And that's exactly what Daniel did when he was in Babylon. God's word helped Daniel to stand strong, to be brave, to stand tall under any given pressure. He sought to help. He sought the help of God. He did not waver. He stood tall and he stood all by himself in the midst of the force of evil. In the midst of a great opposition, we see Daniel used 
he downloaded the strength of god he was so firm as a needle to the pole and so this evening i would like to read the scripture that said given there exodus 15:1 to 4 this is a wonderful song that moses and the children of israelite sang unto the lord i will sing to the lord for he is highly exalted both horse and the drivers he has hurled them into the sea the lord is my strength and my defense he has become my salvation he is my god and i will praise him my father's god that means he says my father's god i will exalt him the lord is a warrior the lord in his name pharaohs and the armies he has hurled them into the sea the best of the pharaoh's officers are drowned in the red sea for thousands and thousands of years we see and we have experienced all those who have downloaded the word of god into their heart was an inspiration to them and so we see the word of god was an inspiration to many people it stood before them like an instructor it stood before them in like a strength it directed them the word of god was a great had great principles and admonition and so we see the living word of god that was restored that was given gave them hope grace and mercy and many had experienced this and many have a great testimony uh, about the word of god that they downloaded and we see that uh, when life gets tough god's word lifts us up and gives us a stamina and courage to carry on and we see there are many text in the bible for example exodus 15:1 to 4 that was our text god is my strength in my defense and we see for over more than 400 years when the children of israelites were wandering they had experienced profound display of god's power some honored them some did not many did not and this 10 dramatic plagues that was displayed before them we see a change many hearts and many did not when pharaoh changed his mind and sent many armies to pursue and get the hebrews back into their fold but god gave a great big passage to the red sea and then they crossed the sea around the egypt and we see the egyptian armies were completely destroyed it sounds so simple that god made a way through the red sea and all the egyptian soldiers and the officers were drowned it sounds but you got to understand the, the impact of god and his power and so this song of praise celebrates the rescue exodus 15 the ultimate fact that god is a deliverer as we see many of us as we see in this passage many of us sometimes struggle to identify the strengths that are found in these verses and so we have to look for our security in him we are lifted up and protected by the champion defender and so sing sing out the word of god in strength because in nehemiah 8:10 it says the joy of the lord is my strength we see a very nice story 
in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah said, go, enjoy, choice food, sweet drinks, send some to those who have nothing. This day he is holy to the Lord. Now who said that we have to really go very simple uh, on uh, very simple on food on Sabbath. No. The Sabbath was given to us to not only enjoy the holy hours, but also to enjoy some good food. And we should not limit ourselves from having a nourished food that God has given. And says, the Lord says, this is the holy day that the Lord, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, in the times of Nehemiah, when they came out of the exile, when Ezra brought them back, they were a group of remnant. They were a group of faithful people who were willing to stand and listen to the word of God. You read the book of Nehemiah. You read the book of Ezra. We see the people were hungering to hear the word of God and discovered their heritage. Listen to Ezra read down until dawn. Ezra started reading the scripture from morning till eve. They rightfully responded in worship. They stood there without food and water, just listening to the word of God. That was the reception that they got. That was the result of their success. That's where they found the strength. Nehemiah tells them that this is a celebration. And in one of the scriptures, more well-known line tells them that the joy of the Lord is the strength. It is their confidence in God's goodness to set them apart and make them a robust people. Now, how did they become robust people? It's purely because their longingness to learn the Bible. In Psalms 46, 1 to 3 says, God is our refuge and strength. There is only one way that we have, we can get the knowledge. The only way that we can understand is reading the Bible over and over again. And God is our refuge and strength. Psalms 46, 1 to 3. In this verse, the Hebrews found what? Not only refuge, not only strength, they found the stamina to be strong spiritually. And that's why I given the, I given this talk a uh, title download the strength of god because the strength of god is more in you more often when you read the word of god ever present time in hell therefore we will not fear though the earth gives way the mountain falls into the heart of the sea though its water roars and forms and the mountains quake and surge and we see in this uh, hebrews during that time, when everything was in chaos and broken, and as they were building the wall, they found time to stand and listen to the word of God because they found stamina, they found hope, they found grace, they found power, they found a life that was more abundant to them. And that's why he says, ever present help in time of trouble. And God is at work even today with his word. Why not we trust in his word? Why not we trust in him? We see in the news today, there are 32 wars in the world. If you have, if you carefully look at the news, listen to the news and look at the news, there are 32 wars going on right now. But 
right now they are only have highlighted Ukraine and Russia and Israel and Hamas. Ukraine and Russia is the most unwanted war ever took place. And uh, Israel and Hamas war is provoked. We understand the world that we are living in. This is the time that we need to stay close to the word of God because the word of God tells us what is going on. Because when you listen to the news today, our souls get weary with sorrow. Psalms 119, which is the longest chapter, uh, uh, longest chapter in the book of Psalms, David looks to God for strength. Why should your souls weary? You know, weary is a negative emotion. Why should your soul go weary? Stress, anxiety, sad, discouragement, doubt, sorrow, sadness. All this comes under why are the souls weary? And we see that in Psalms 9, 119 verse 28, he says, the strength comes from God's word. Strengthen me according to your word. And Psalms 119 is the longest chapter in the entire Bible. And we see here, which will make us wise, which will make us righteous, which will prepare us for good work and also prepare us for the storm that we are about to face. So in the midst of the psalm, psalm speaks of his weariness and sorrow. And who does he look up to? He looks up to God for his strength. What a great message that we have. So we need to fortify ourselves. We, do, we need to armor ourselves with the word of God. Because God, the Lord, is our strong tower. Proverbs 18.10 In the name of the Lord is fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are, are safe. So when we look in the same place, uh, when we look for security other than God, we have failed. We trust in our riches. We trust in our relationship. We trust in so many other things that cannot protect us. We need to trust in God and his word. Then we see there is no one that can help us. We are already fortified by the tower of God. And so in Isaiah 40 there is another one. This chapter also says to all those who hope in the Lord will not go weary, will be renewed in strength. Isaiah 40 verse 29 to 38. He gives strength to the weary. He increases power to the weak. Even the youth grows tired and weary and the young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength and they will soar on wings like eagle and run and not weary and grow weary, for they will walk and not faint. So there is so much that we can learn to fortify ourselves with the word of God because the devil is like a roaring lion ready to devour. At this point, everyone gets physical and emotional exhaustion. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. In this passage in Isaiah 40 that we just read is an incredible enc encouragement that we get. We get an incredible uh, encouragement. God is a source of unlimited renewal and all we have is to do his will and wait upon the Lord. Seek, or seek him while he is found. Today is our time to seek him while he is found. When you seek him, you will find him. When you find him, you will get strengthened. So strengthen and uphold 
by the word of God. Isaiah 41, 9 to 10. He says, I took you from the ends of the earth. From the farthest corner, I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I have, and I have not rejected you. So do not fear. Fear is one of the greatest thing that many people are living in today. There is always a kind of a very fearful atmosphere in the world that we are living in. There were about more than 2,000 shootings, death, and uh, uh, life is so uncertain. When you go, we are not sure that you're coming in. But what the Lord says is, do not be dismayed, for I am the Lord. I will strengthen you and keep you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And that is what we need to do to trust in the Lord, to have hope in the Lord. Here God is speaking to Israelites. Here God is speaking to us even. God spoke to them and displayed wonders. God is willing to speak to us and display wonders. So we have to be faithful. God is still. Sorry. God still he calls and he strengthens. He upholds and he helps us. And he does not do any harm to us because he keeps his promise and we see uh, my strength is perfect in weakness second corinthians second corinthians 12 9 to 1 we see that uh, uh, this text says my grace is sufficient for you my power is made perfect in weakness therefore i will boast all more more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest in me. We see that Paul completely surrenders himself. He sees that he is crowded with weakness. He is bombarded with weakness. He finds himself in the midst of weakness. And he says what? In the, in the midst of my weakness, I count whose power? God's power. Christ's power may rest in me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness. So don't worry, even if you have fallen. Don't worry if you have made mistake. Don't worry, don't worry about your weaknesses. Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, insult. And you know that Paul had gone through many, many insult, hardship, persecution, difficulties, wounds, in all that he did not move. He took Christ on his side. And he says, for when I am weak, I am strong. Because what Paul says, in my weakness, whom did he seek? Jesus Christ and the word of God. My power is made perfect in weakness. So in Ephesians 6, 10 to 11, we see, be strong in the Lord. Finally, be strong in the Lord, be in his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take a stand against the devil. So the only way, the only way we can take the stand against the devil is uh, enriching yourself, uh, downloading in your mind, memorizing, reading the Bible more often. That will give us strength. Philippians 4, 11 to 13, it says, For I am saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content with whatever circumstances. I know what it is to be needed. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. What a wonderful blessing it is for us to enrich ourselves. Enrich ourselves. In Philippians 4.13, it says, uh, it's, rather well, it's a very well-known uh, scripture uh, where Paul has endured so much of mis uh, in his ministry. He has, in, he has gone through persecution, shipwreck, and betrayal. Throughout all these times, uh, 
he learned the secret of contentment and he learned the secret of being with god he learned the secret of not losing his hope in the lord he is he learned the secret of uh, not losing to the devil so we through his obedience god that's why paul says that he was in his obedience he was obedient he learned to love god he learned to depend on the strength of god and he counted god's strength in all sorts of trials that he experienced so let us now search the scriptures and in them you think you have eternal life each one of us will face a myriad of trials and difficulties but through them all god will be faithful if we wait on him if you seek him if you trust him and depend on his word for protection guiding guidance and leading he will renew our life through his word because god's word is quick and powerful god's word is quick and powerful sharper than any two edged sword when we have god's word so quick and so powerful there is nothing that we need to fear so let the word of god abide in us let the word of god linger in our mind let the word of god be often referred to do not get weary do not get sad do not get anxious for i am crucified with christ i no longer live but christ lives in me for the life now i live in, in body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave his life for me may god bless each one of us may god help us when we have the time to download some of his promises some of his grace in our heart there were times that i knew more than 500 memory verses and uh, and now sometimes when i try to recollect i i have forgotten most of them but still i have the one of my favorite one is the angel of the lord in camp at around about them that fear them and deliver them or taste and see blessed is the lord that trusteth in him there's another one that i often um, repeat is john 316 all of us know but most of them do not know john 317 for god sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved and so we have that surety from god through jesus christ through his precious living word that we will find comfort and strength in these uncertain times that we are living shall we all pray now and um, i have some special prayer to offer i am going to remember uh, the prayers that are given list that is given to me and i hope that uh, this is a great blessing to each one of us and i hope uh, this small message has helped us that we go back to the bible let us go back to the bible let us go back to the bible verse by verse and get our courage and strength and stamina and the bravery to fight all kinds of negative emotions and all kinds of bad thoughts and all kinds of uh, uh, scary um, moments let us depend on god and um, uh, i'm going to pray for the following people uh, uh, is it okay mr mr anand yes so uh, okay. you can see all the names that have been Uh, I can out. see I can see all the names. Yeah. I can see so, all the names. So feel free to go ahead and but anyway let me mention a few things before you pray the closing prayer. So um for healing Mrs. Uh, Bupi Samuel, Mrs. Premi Ratanraj, Mrs. Judy Donopati, Mrs. Mary Naka, Mr. Tiero Das who lost uh, his beloved wife and uh, funeral was held last week. I'm sorry this uh, last Sunday Mr Mesfin Mr CJ and also Mr Kelly Palpuri 
and uh, we are glad to report that uh, uh, for the book project, 3,775 was collected thus far, and we need to raise another $1,225. So we thank all those who are contributing. And of course, we'd like to thank for the leadership of Dr. Sonia Salvin and Mrs. Uh, Premila Padilla. And of course, thanks. And of course, for the growth of our church. And of course, pray for traveling horses for me because I'm uh, traveling this Sunday evening, November 12th to India. I'll be there in Bangalore and uh, go to Pune, come back to Bangalore, go so, and then come back here on the 28th. So, um, while I'm away, Dr. Sonia will uh, uh, coordinate this Vespers program. In fact, I was training her earlier uh, before we started. She's right here. And I hope everything will go well. And uh, so let's have the closing prayer. Thank you. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we thank you, dear Lord, for all the many blessings and for all the many strength and for all the many grace and mercies that flowed from thy throne of grace. We thank you, dear Lord, for often surrounding ourselves with your grace and mercy. We thank you for every single thing that you have provided and the spiritual gifts that you have blessed us with. For the God, there are some names that we need to remember and bring it forth, bring forth to you for your consideration and for your healing mercies. Mrs. Uh, Bopi uh, Samuel, uh, Mrs. Uh, Premi Ratan Raj, Mrs. Julia Dundapati, Mr. Mrs. Mary Naka, Mr. T. Aruldas, Mr. Mesif, Mesfin, Mr. Milton John, and Mr. Kelly Pedapudi, and Mrs. Sadana for healing, and also be with uh, Mr. Anand as he is making a brief visit to India, giving me traveling mercies. We pray, dear Lord, that you will bless each one of the names that have been mentioned for a special request. That you will work with them, that you will find their, that they will find your blessings amidst them. And um, wait upon you, dear Lord, for your consideration. We also pray for others who are um, feeling so and depressed, feeling uh, differently. We pray that you will send thy Holy Spirit and give them the comfort, give them the joy that they need. Help us to hope in you, dear Lord, because you are hope and our salvation. Father God, guide us each one of us as we spend during this dark house and see, help us to see another beautiful day. Bless each one of us. We commit ourselves in thy care and keep. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Mr. Meshek, for the message that we uh, heard today. Next week, uh, which is November 17, Mr. West James will speak. So please join us again, and uh, Dr. Sonia will coordinate the Vespers here. And so now let us meet and greet. Brother Meshach, thank you for a wonderful message. We were so blessed and thank you also for your prayers. I'd like to thank the entire group for your prayers on my behalf. Yes, for the last three months, I have been having health issues, but I thank the Lord that I'm feeling much better and my physical therapy is going to go on through the end of this month. But thank you all so much for your prayers. I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you, Mr. Meshek, for that uh, beautiful and inspiring message. We hope you'll continue to support Hopeside Church. And uh, very happy to know that Premyaka is feeling much better. Let us continue to pray for her. And um, 
Thank you, Alfred and the others who have joined from India. Uh, have a blessed, happy and blessed Sabbath, each one of you. Thank you, Pansy. Thank you so much, Master Meshik. It was a wonderful, wonderful message and all uh, verses uh, helping us to depend on God more and to trust God. Thank you so much, Pastor Meshik. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us this Vespers. I hope you all have a wonderful Sabbath tomorrow and see you all tomorrow for those who are coming here to church tomorrow and for others, see you next week. Bye and happy Sabbath. <laughs>